Hello, and welcome to tutorial for the preview 5B in index numbers. <clears throat> okay, last tutorial we talked about uh, doing like unit, unit ratios and so forth. So let's see what 5B is going to be. So what is meant by index numbers? So 5B, so let's see what we're going to do in this section. We will, by the end of uh, this preview, we'll be able to calculate or interpret percentages, <clears throat> explain what a cost of living average represents, compare cost of living averages by writing a ratio, and give historical information about the federal minimum wage. So let's see, in the next class, you would need to be able to calculate and interpret percentages, give a practical interpretation of average, and accomplish multiplication by a reciprocal using division. <clears throat> the tutorial for preview of Lesson 5, Part B, Index Numbers, begins here. So question one, view the prompt and enter your response in the box. <clears throat> Check your answer when you are finished. Consider the statement, the number of equations on exam one is 75% of the number of questions on exam two. Which of the following calculations would support this conclusion? Choose all that apply. So let's see, exam one, has 75% of the questions as exam 2 has. So first thing I'm going to do is, okay, let's see, 75%. Since that is a number less than 100%, that means we're going to look at a smaller number. So exam 1 has 75% of exam 2. So exam 1, that tells me, for starters, exam 1 has less questions than exam 2. Which means exam 2 will be the base on what we want to use. Exam 1 is 75% of exam 2. So let's see which one of these um, apply. Exam 1 has 16 questions. Exam 2 has 12 questions. Well, because we took the time to basically figure out that concept, the, the big picture, Big picture, exam one is smaller than exam two, question-wise. This one says exam one, 16, is bigger than 12. So that can't be it. Okay, exam one has 12 questions, exam two has 16 questions. Okay. 12 is less than 16, so maybe. Uh, so exam 1 is 12, exam 2 is 16. Again, 12 is less than 16. That's in the writing. Uh, exam 1 is 16, exam 2 is 12. Okay. So we successfully narrowed our choices down to B and or C. Now, I'm, I'm of, the, of the rule where I use the is over of equals percent over 100. And let's see. So, exam one is 75% of three. So, we're saying exam one has 12. Of exam is exam two, 16, and of course uh, that comes as a ratio. 
or is a decimal of three fourths of 0.75. So yes, B works. However, doing a little bit of math here, if I go and multiply both sides by 16, We get 12 is 0.75 times 16, which is um, oop, which is C. So it looks like B and C would be correct answer. Our correct answers or give the same equivalent answers. Yep, B and C. Now, there's a lot of talk here, a lot of this you know, you're doing ahead, and it comes with experience. But don't, when you see any kind of word problem, do do a general analysis. The, the macro analysis, maybe not the micro stuff. Okay, so it's clear ink. Next problem. All right. The spreadsheet, the spreadsheet for lesson five, part B, contains salary and cost of living index data for 10 cities. Uh, suppose we have a similar job in each of the 10 different cities. For now, let's compare cost of living cities to the U.S. national cost of living. In the lesson, our goal will be to identify the most attractive offer. Suppose the U.S. national average annual cost of living is 44600 And we use a spreadsheet. So let's see. <clears throat> so we get national average, which means we took all the major cities, add them up, divide by how many cities we had, and that's what we got. So we look at, at San Antonio. You're being offered a you have a job offer of seventy nine thousand dollars. Cost of living is 31612 in San Antonio. National average is 44600 which means San Antonio has a lower cost of living than the average cost of living in the United States. Uh, San Antonio is higher than El Paso, less than Dallas, a lot less than San Francisco, more than Crete, New Nebraska. So let's do the next question. And this is how their cost of living was, was determined. Um, housing, utilities, food, transportation, insurance, entertainment. And looks like all these guys should add up to 31612. So what do you think is a practical meaning of national average, national average annual cost of living? Well, let's see, it's, let's look at the terms. It's national and it's average. So one could say is, I'm spitballing here. You know, on average, in the US, it costs 
$44,600 a year to meet your your typical needs. Again, what are your typical needs? Housing, utilities, food, transportation, insurance, entertainment. Uh, no clothing's not in, in it. Um, I'm not sure like cell phone would be like on the utilities. Um, what else do we have in there? Because uh, vacations aren't in there. Unless I can entertain somehow. But these are the criteria or what they consider to be your uh, basically your typical needs. <clears throat> Um, some places cost more than average. Some places cost, can't spell, less than average. Why do I say that? Well, here's your, here's your cost. And some of these numbers are below 44,000. Some are above 44,000. Pacific San Fran. Okay. Obviously, the coming to 44,000, they use a lot more cities than just these are 11, excuse me, 10. <clears throat> Check answers. Uh, cost of living in typical U.S. city for a year. Or average in the U.S., it costs Four thousand to a year to meet your typical needs. Uh, some states are more expensive living, while others have cheaper housing, other costs. Uh, variety of ways to calculate the average, but it will be somewhere between least and most expensive. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the next question. Let's expand. Consider the job offer and cost of living in Phoenix. Okay, so Phoenix. Uh, job offer. $98,000. Cost of living. 40738 Uh, which the following statement is true. The cost of living is the same as the national average. And the national average was 44,600. So, that's not it. Cost of living in Phoenix is greater than the national average. Well, 40,000 is less than 44,000. So, that's not true. Cost of living is less than national average. Yes. Let's see. Use a percentage to complete the following sentence. The annual cost of living Phoenix is what percent of the national average? So let's see. Question is forty thousand seven hundred thirty-eight is what percent of forty-four thousand six hundred? Again, it's cost of living in Phoenix, national average. And again, is over of equals percent. Over a hundred percent. Proximity rule. The is is forty thousand. So basically, forty thousand is what 
part of the total, or the whole 44,600. And that as a, as a straight decimal would be is 0 0.9134, again that's percent over 100. <clears throat> so I multiply both sides by 100. Cancel, cancel. And all it's going to do is take this number, this decimal, and move it over. So it looks like it becomes a 91.34%. Round the nearest whole percent, less than 5. Percent. It's a solution. Form you can see to a D2, uh, 0 0.9134, 91%. Percent. Yes. So, cost of living things is 91% of the national average. Ah, see, what formula could, would calculate the cost of living in San Francisco as a percentage of the national average? Oops. Okay, we got to start over here. So look, the formula would be C2 over D2, <clears throat> which would give us cost of living. divided by national average and make it into percentage you need to add 100, 100 to it and what would that give us then? Yeah, so in the calculator Gives us oops, well, I do at a Phoenix. We want San Francisco. So that would be not C two D two, but C three over D three. And then times 100. Or 81,216 divided by 44,600. Or 1.8209. Or 182%. So we have for formula here. Okay, C3 over D3. Uh, solution 1.82 or 182%. That also means, since it's larger than 100%, it's a more expensive city to live in. What's driving its cost? 
uh, looking, looking at individual columns, um, housing is definitely way up there. I mean, compared to San Antonio, it's like almost five times more expensive, almost three times more expensive than Phoenix. Utilities is reasonable. Food isn't even that out of out of out of whack. Transportation is right in line. Um, insurance a little higher, but not by a whole lot. And entertainment isn't anything out of whack. So the, the big driver of San Francisco is housing. And mind you, this is not the cost to buy a house. This is just or or an apartment or a condo. That's what you'd be paying a year for that house or that condo, either you know, housing payments, um, condo fees taxes, so forth. So I'm going to spreadsheet. I said just basic cost of living. Cost of living divided by national average. San Antonio would be what? It would be C11 over D11. Let's see, what is resulting percentage of the following cities? And referring to basically this, this column here. <coughs> uh, Denver, well, that'd be C4 over D4. Detroit, C5 over D5. Crete, C6 over D6, and Schenectady, C7 over D7. So B, Denver, 41,856 over the base. For the average, Detroit, 29,904 <clears throat> over 46,00, Crete, 31,456,00, 46,000, and Schenectady. 35,254 over 44,6. Okay, thing to note, everyone has the same base. You want to compare it to the national average. I'm going to get lazy here. And I'm going to just do it here. A new quick column here. Huh. You get that fixed. I'm gonna do it by hand. All right. So forty one. Back. Why don't you go on, why don't you pause for a little bit? Put me on pause and you figure those numbers out for me. What do these sort of ratios, these sort of this division come out to? I'm going to go on pause for a minute. You figure it out. Okay, again, done. Now for Detroit, I got 0 0.9384 for 94%. For Detroit, I got 0 0.6704 or 
subset for Crete 0 0.7053 or 71 percent and for Schenectady 7904 or 79 percent so let's see how we did Uh, 94 percent check 67 check 71 check and 79 percent check so you like essentially C column C over column D same row Next, <clears throat> oh, same thing. I'm um, real Dallas, El Paso, San, San Antonio. Amarillo, um, the thirty one thousand twenty four over that good old national average. Uh, Dallas. Over good old national average. El Paso. Over our national average. And San Antonio. Can essentially cost a living over national average. So again, put me on pause. And once you take a few minutes and calculate those those fractions. Okay, hope you took time to do this. Well, I got zero point six nine five six, or about seventy percent of national average. 0.8043, or Dallas is about 80% of national average. Again, less less expensive, less expensive. El Paso has 6849, or 68% of national average. And San Antonio of 0 0.7088, or about 71% of national average. And let's see how we did. I'm worried about same percent. Check. Dallas, 80 percent. Check. El Paso, 68 percent. Check. And San Antonio, 71 percent. Check. You look at the spreadsheet. We're just looking at cost of living over the national average. Okay, question five. In a new browser, read the article Inflation and the Real Minimum Wage. Um, all I did, all I need to do is basically highlight this part. Um, actually, ooh, I lost it. Try something different than usual. Do a copy. Open up another web browser. And do that. You can just pull up this here sheet. And you should go right to this page. In fact, I'll do it again. You just Copy it and then hit just hit go. Opening that page. 
So get on that page on, on your own on your computer. Bring up that page and go on pause and, and take a few minutes and read it. Okay, hopefully you took some time and, and read it. Okay. Uh, print page two and three of the article and bring it to class. Well, we're not going to come to class, so we're doing it now. And it'll be used also, this article should be being used when you do your worksheets on the textbook. So let's see. For each item, select the correct answer from the list. So this is from the from the from the uh, article. The minimum wage was originally established in what year? Now let's go look. Now, look, they were established in 1938 at 25 cents per hour. Correct. The original minimum wage was twenty-five cents. Currently, it's seven twenty-five. <clears throat> okay. Hey, we can we, we can read Yahoo, and we're done with the tutorial. <clears throat> now let's go through our little. Checklist here. How confident are you that you can calculate or interpret a percentage? I am. How confident that you can explain what a cost of living average represents? Eh, I'm going to give myself a four on that one because there's some extra terms I didn't have. How confident are you that you can compare cost of living averages by writing a ratio? Oh, it's C over D, right? And how confident are you that you can give historical information about the federal minimum wage? Alrighty. One button. Did I just close it out? I think I did. Didn't mean to. And this before okay, so in the part B. We complete the tutorial, and we have calculated or interpreted percentages. Yes, we have. We've explained what cost of living average represents. Yes, we have. Compared cost of living by writing a ratio, i.e., fraction, and give historical information about the federal minimum wage. Yes, we have. So we're good to go. So I'm going to close out this window, and I shall see you next. For going over the questions.